Today's sound is... And this is how to make it in Serum. What's going on everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to another Epi Quack Tuts. Again, we are making this sound. Today I'm going to be showing you guys the two best wavetables for getting these types of sounds and the best way to use them and also the best way to get one of the best ways to get that real nice rhythmy flangey atmosphere. For those who don't know and want to support the channel, um, I do have three serum packs out. They're all absolutely insane. Pretty well priced for what you get. 150 presets in the third pack, 100 presets in the second one. And if you buy the first one, you get the second one for only five bucks, so it's 30 bucks for 250 amazing uh, serum presets. And I guarantee you'll love them. So we have our initialized serum right here. What you want to do is go ahead to analog, go to basic shapes, and then bring it to the triangle wave, and then go to oscillator B, and we're going to be using acid as our FM source instead of another basic shapes wavetable. This combination right here is perfect. You can get all kinds of crazy bases, not just rhythm bases from this. Um, so I really like to use this as my starting point when I'm trying to recreate some of these rhythm bases. So level down on oscillator B, level up for now, all the way on um, oscillator A, and let's start to bring up FM from B on oscillator A. Bring the octave down too. And you can kind of hear we're already getting that rhythm -y type of tone, I guess you could say. So um, I have the octave down one on oscillator B, and then just kind of a matter of experimenting, finding the spot on the wavetable position that sounds cool to you. So you can hear, not only can we get cool rhythm basses like wonky shit, but we can also get some really nice sirens, some really cool sustained basses. And go ahead, bring the random phase knob all the way down so we get a consistent tone. So I have my wave table position right around here, right around 11, 11 o'clock. And then the FM from B is going to be right around here. Right at 87. Now what you want to do is start to make it move a little bit, then we'll start adding our filters. So LFO 1, just bring it to the level. First of all, bring the level all the way down for oscillator A, and then you can bring the LFO there. Turn it on trigger. And we want to more wonkify this sound a little bit. So we want to make it a little bit more wonky. So I like to curve these in, and then curve this one in. And then I also like to bring the level of this a little bit down a little bit. To about right there. And what I found is this kind of enhances the wonky feel of it. I mean, all we're kind of doing for now at least is just bring the level down. But I find once we route this LFO to the distortion and some other effects, it kind of just increases the overall wonkiness of the sound, if that makes sense, I guess, just by bringing this LFO level down a little bit. Um, so now let's hop into our filters. First off, we're going to be using the uh, combs filter. So go to miscellaneous combs. <laughs> Bring the resonance to 50%, boost the drive a little bit. And that's the kind of effect we're going for right there. So cut off, bring it all the way up, and then bring LFO 1 to the cutoff, and bring it down to taste. We just want a little bit. So now without the combs, with it. Starting to get some of that flangey niceness that uh, that we're going for. All right, hop into our effects section. Um, first off, distortion. We're going to be using diode two. So let me show you why we're using diode two. So bring the drive all the way down. Modulate it with LFO one. So now diode one. So diode two will cut the sound out completely. Diode one will let it bleed. So depending on what you're going for, I'm going for more of that wonky type of feel and diode 2 is giving it to me by cutting out the sound completely once the drive hits zero. So that's the difference between diode 1 and diode 2 and why I'm using diode 2. Uh, compressor, turn on the multiband, boost the gain. Next, let's go to our phaser. Put that after the compressor. Right all the way down, feedback you can leave where it is, and then the depth, bring it to about here. So you can hear the kind of sound we're getting there. And then frequency, you know, you can make it wherever you want. I have it right around there. Then we're going to modulate it, of course, LFO 1 to the depth, bring it down to taste. Same thing with the frequency. And then just bring the mix down because it's a little too much. 
Um, the flanger we're actually not using, even though it's a flangey base. Uh, we're going to be getting our flanger from the uh, from the uh, flanger filter in uh, the filter section. So now before we add our rhythmy atmosphere and the actual flanger filter, let's get our EQ and shape the sound and give it the kind of movement that we're looking for here. Um, so if I play the original sound right here, you, you can see the, the cellophane, it's a low pass and a high pass, and they're just kind of moving opposite of each other. They're both just opening up. It's giving it this nice kind of reversal suction-y type of sound, which is, I don't know, kind of increasing the wonkiness feel of it. It just kind of brings everything together and it sounds better with it than without it. So let's just go ahead and set that up. Um, we're going to be doing the uh, high pass on the left, low pass on the right. Bring the Q up just a little bit on the left side so we kind of exaggerate the movement of that one. And then leave the frequency where it is, but we are going to be modulating that with LFO2. So LFO2 is just going to be a simple ramp down motion, kind of curved like this. And it's just going to be routed to the frequency here. So I don't want this EQ just going, following the same motion as LFO1. I want it to be more of an exaggerated, like quick ramp down motion. And that's, and that's like, you know, just enhancing the transient at the beginning of the sound, giving it that cool reversal type of sound and that's how you get that type of sound um, by doing different LFO shapes especially this ramp down motion right here and then for the right side here our low pass we're going to just use LFO 3 and just have the normal triangle wave make sure these are both on trigger and um, quarter notes uh, so bring LFO 3 to the frequency and let it go all the way up and then bring the resonance down so without it I mean, they both sound cool. You can do it with or without, whatever you like. Um, I thought it sounded better with the EQ on it. Um, all right, next, let's go to our chorus. We'll bring this um, right after the EQ here. And then we're going to bring the rate all the way down, delay one all the way down, low pass all the way up. And then uh, boost the mix for now just so you can hear what we're getting here. And then boost the, f the uh, feedback. And then just bring down the depth to taste. Just like that. Uh, bring down the mix a little bit more. All right, so now last is going to be our filter here. Um, I like to use the flanges filters, the uh, flange plus filter right here to be exact. And then this one, you kind of have to find the sweet spot on the cutoff depending on what note you're hitting. So let me show you what I mean. Boost the resonance. And then start bringing down the cutoff. So right around there, that, that's the sweet spot. <laughs> and then what you want to do is just modulate a very small portion of that. So I'm using LFO1, and that's just going to go up a little bit. And that's pretty much it. I mean, this recreation, um, the remake here is kind of a little different than the original patch I made, but it really, I just wanted to show you guys the principles of making these types of bases and leave the rest up to you. That's kind of the most important thing here. Do what, do what you want with these sounds. Don't just make them exact because there's tons of different things you can do with them, obviously. So, like I said, I just wanted to give you the baselines, you know, the fundamental ways of making these types of sounds and then leave the rest up to you. Um, but if you'd like to set me a quack tuts, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Probably going to do some autumn hate, um, ominous, and uh, see what else we can do. Later.